Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins in a huge house, where a big party is taking place. The owner of this mansion is former American football star Paul Crewe, who, because of the match-fixing scandal, is no longer allowed to play. He was accused of cheating in a big game, but the accusation was never proven. So all his free time is spent doing his favorite thing, just drinking. This evening, Paul is in the company of his friends, beer and television. But his girlfriend is not very happy about it. She turns off the TV, and reminds the man that he is no longer a boy, and that it's time for him to grow up. And if he doesn't meet all her demands, she will leave him and kick him out of the house. Paul lures her into the wardrobe and locks her in. Then he leaves this depressing party, and gets into his girlfriend's car to take a drive around the city. Soon, he is stopped by the police, who inform him that his car turns out to be stolen. The man, being drunk, starts making jokes about the appearance of one of the policemen. He then asks them to hold his beer and drives in reverse, crashing into their car. Then Paul goes into Dominic Toretto mode, and drives masterfully on the wrong side of the road, and creates a disaster. For this overnight adventure, he is sent to prison for three years, where he receives a warm welcome and is treated like a real star. Before he is taken to the warden, the captain makes it clear to him that he must reject the boss's offer regarding the prison guard's football team. Then he is taken to the most important man in this place, Warden Rudolf Hazen, who says he has tapped all his connections so that he can bring him right to his prison. Hazen has a job for Paul, and wants him to share his football experience and coach his boys, a team of prison guards led by the captain, but Paul politely declines the offer. One of the next days, Paul meets a guy nicknamed Caretaker. It turns out that he is the guy that can get anything you want. He introduces him to local ladies, but Paul refuses to spend time with these beauties. After that, Paul decides to prove his worth, and hits one of the prisoners in the head. As a result, he receives a punch in the face and is sent to the disciplinary cell for re-education. Having served his time in solitary confinement, he decides to accept the warden's offer, but in a slightly modified form. He suggests that Hazen form an extra team composed of inmates, for practice matches. This way, the team of prison guards can boost their self-esteem, and prepare for the upcoming season. The warden likes the idea because he is running for state governor in the fall, and the publicity should help his campaign. Hazen wants to appoint Paul as captain of the backup team, and gives him a month to put it together. He wants to back out, saying he just wants to serve his three-year sentence in peace. On the other hand, Hazen lets him know that for beating an inmate, his sentence may increase. In this way, Hazen convinces him to accept his offer. Subsequently, Paul and the caretaker start looking for players, but the idea does not appeal to all the inmates. Paul spots a giant man, Switowski, who he asks to join the team. Switowski agrees, but reveals that he has never played football. At the first practice, Paul discovers that none of the inmates who chose to join the team have played football. After warming up, he decides that they should devise a strategy, but things start to go wrong, and end in a fight. After practice, he discusses how to get out of this situation and where to find good players. An elderly gentleman, Nate approaches them and offers to help. It turns out that he is a former football player who was quite famous. The boys, of course, accept his help, and proceed to put together a team. Nate decides to take advantage of his connections and brings his friend, Skitchy to Paul. He is the oldest resident of the prison. Skitchy tells them that he knows where the files of every person in this prison are kept. A fight breaks out among the prisoners, and Paul decides to sneak into the file room to study the information about the other inmates. The files show that all the inmates have their own level of danger, and the caretaker decides to check the level of dangerousness of his manic personality. But it turns out that he is only half a star, and this fact greatly amuses the others. Then they decide to get to work, and draw up a list of players for their dream team, choosing the most aggressive inmates. Then comes the time for recruiting. Paul decides to visit Turley, a seven-foot giant, but fails miserably. Next on the list is Torres, but he too rejects this pathetic offer. Moments later, the security guard intervenes and turns off the television, not letting Torres finish watching his favorite program. He learns that the security guard is part of the enemy team, and agrees to play. Adding Torres to the team turns out to be a great move, as he proves to have great playing skills. After another practice, they decided to strengthen the lineup. The caretaker advises him to add more black players. When Paul goes to the basketball court to ask the black inmates to join the team, their leader, Deacon Moss rejects. Paul challenges Deacon to a game of one-on-one -on -one basketball, saying that if he wins, the brothers will join the team, while if Deacon wins, Paul will leave them alone. Deacon agrees, and despite Deacon's unconcealed personal fouls of elbows punches or grabbing Paul, 
he continues without complaint. On the winning shot, Paul steals the ball from Deacon and scores, but the other team calls a foul. Realizing that he will not be allowed to win, he lets Deacon score the final shot. Although Deacon beats him, one of the brothers, a speedy athlete Earl Meggett, impressed by Paul's decision to accept defeat, joins the football team as a running back. Earl proves to be a very skilled player, and single-handedly beats the prison team. Then the local ladies arrive and decide to form a fan club. Hazen learns that the local television station wants to broadcast their games against the prisoners. The warden likes the idea, as it is a good opportunity to boost his rating. Paul once again tries to attract the giant to his own team. He talks about the plan to form a football team and kick the guards' butts. In addition, the giant's security guard plays defense, so he obviously agrees to join. Curly, despite having never played football, proves to be a beast, managing to stop even Switowski. Turley accidentally breaks his nose, and is forced to apologize to Switowski. Later, the prison spy informs the captain of Paul's team of their progress. When the security guards learn of this, they go to the local library to provoke Earl into a fight. However, Earl, not wanting to be beaten and spend the night in solitary confinement, restrains himself, and doesn't give in to their provocations. Then Deacon, dissatisfied with the chaos of the prison, along with his brothers, decide to join the team. Paul's team improves significantly during the next practice, but there is still one problem to solve, the snitch. Paul meets with the warden to ask him to remove the snitch, who interferes with their training and reports important information to opponents. Hazen says he will think about it and give him an answer soon. The next day, Hazen and the guards try to thwart Paul's team by expanding the camp. But the spirit of the prisoners is not broken by these trifles, and they continue to practice for the upcoming game. Since the guards want to play dirty, they decide to keep up and use the same methods. They sneak into the infirmary to look for information about the injuries and weaknesses of the opposing players. Next day, they continue training and enjoy all the new things the caretaker brings to the prison. At night, the caretaker gives Paul a surprise. He finds a bottle of vodka and two glasses in his cell. After that, the boys get drunk. The prisoners learn that he has cheated in his career, but he claims to be innocent, nevertheless, he does not convince anyone. In the morning, he is taken to the warden's office, where his secretary is already waiting for him. The lady says she has very valuable information, and is ready to share it for a small photo shoot. Paul receives some old game tapes of the prison guards team. The snitch reports to the guards that the prisoners have access to their tapes. Furious, the guards ask the snitch to take drastic measures. The night before the game, Nate gives a small motivational speech to the team. The snitch decides to deal with the issue in his own style, and installs an explosive in Paul's radio. But instead of killing him, the victim turns out to be the caretaker, who enters the cell first. Paul and the others see the explosion, and try to do something about it, but it is too late. The next day, they bury him, and each leaves behind a personal item given by the caretaker. The football game becomes a big event in town, and many spectators come to watch it. Sitting in the locker room, Paul offers the inmates one last gift from the caretaker. It turns out that he had prepared their uniforms with the team name on them. In the first half of the game, the prisoners managed to take the lead, thanks to unfair refereeing and disunity among the opponents. Every player on the prisoners team tries to retaliate against their opponents, and no one thinks about the game. Paul manages to end the chaos, and after half time, the prisoners manage to tie the game. To teach the referee a lesson, they hit him with the ball between his legs, and Paul suggests he referee fairly. During the break, Hazen decides to solve the problem. He threatens to hold Paul responsible for caretaker's murder with false witnesses. Therefore, he will face another 25 years in prison if they don't lose the game. He agrees, as long as his teammates don't get hurt. Hazen doesn't keep his promise, and asks the captain of the guards team to play very aggressively, to let them know who is in charge. Hazen reveals that he has agreed with Paul, and the match is in their pocket. Early in the second half, Paul leaves the court, feigning an injury, causing outrage among his teammates. Because of the leader's absence on the court, the team begins to collapse, and the guards double their points. Soon, the game becomes a disaster. Seeing the full picture and remembering his previous sins, Paul decides not to ruin the game this time, and returns in the game, but his teammates completely ignore him. They think he is trying to lose, at which point he reveals the truth. He says that in his career, he has specifically lost games because of large debts. He then reveals threats from Hazen, and asks them to give him another chance. At the end of the game, they manage to close the point gap and take the game to overtime, where they manage to snatch the victory. The captain of the guard team thanks Paul for the good game, and promises not to testify unfairly against him, 
Hazen scolds the captain for losing the game, and notices Paul heading for the exit of the stadium. He orders the captain to shoot Paul, hinting that he is trying to escape. The captain hesitates, and realizes that he is just trying to get the ball back. Paul hands it back to Hazen, telling him to stick it in his trophy case. Deacon dumps Gatorade on Hazen. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.